Now question number 12. It is based upon uh, a solution of two volatile liquids. We know that if our solution is ideal solution, for ideal solution we can apply Raoult's law according to which total pressure is equal to sum of vapor pressure of A and vapor pressure of B in case of the solution. So this is going to be Pt ideal. If we use these values, we are going to get this pressure equal to 280 torrs. Now the total pressure of the solution actually is given to us and this value is equal to 240 torr. So we can see that Pt ideal for this solution is greater than Pt real for this solution. So we can see that this solution is not a real, it is not an ideal solution, it is a real solution. And since vapor pressure is less than what has been predicted by Raoult's law, so we can say that it is a real solution showing the negative deviation from the Raoult's law. Since it is showing negative deviation from the Raoult's law, so we can say that the intermolecular forces are going to be weaker in this particular solution and it is going to form a maximum boiling azeotrope. And uh, according to the negative deviation, delta V mixture is going to be less than 0. So according to all these options, we can say that option B and option C is correct. Uh, I would like to remind you that in case of a real solution with negative deviation, if we draw a curve between boiling point and mole fraction, so the kind of graph that we will be getting is somewhat like this. Since vapor pressure is minimizing at a particular point at azeotropic concentration, so at that azeotropic concentration, the boiling point of the solution is going to be maximum. So that is how we can say that maximum boiling azeotrope is getting formed in this solution. Uh, in question number 17, we have been told to calculate number of photons per second. Now we know that number of photons per second can be calculated from the formula intensity of the radiation divided by energy of a single photon. Using the values that have been given in this numerical, intensity is 100 joule per second and energy of each photon is 1240 divided by 1240 in electron volts and in joules this value will be 1.6 into 10 raised power minus 19 joules. So from this we can get this value is coming out to be equal to 10 raised to power 20 divided by 1.6. So according to this option B must be correct for question number 17. In question number 18 the value of quantum yield for the reaction is equal to 0.2. Quantum yield can be defined as number of electrons which have been emitted per second divided by number of photons that have been used per second. I think this is the definition of quantum yield for this process. Now we know that number of electrons emitted per second, we have been we have calculated this value coming out to be equal to 0.2 into 10 raised power 21. Now this value is going to be equal to 10 raised power 21 divided by 1.6 as we have calculated in the previous problem question number 17 we are using the same value so putting this value here number of electrons emitted per second this will come out to be equal to 0.2 times 10 raised power 21 divided by 1.6 uh, ultimately we have to calculate number of electrons that will be emitted per minute in this process so we can multiply number of electrons that have been multiplied per second by number of seconds in one minute and this value will come out to be equal to 7.5 into 10 raised to power 21 according to which option D must be correct 